Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. Oh, for many of you, you would say, Sounds like the voice you've been hearing all day of my partner. I'll tell you what's happening. Channeling is a cooperative. It requires two angels. At least two. The one that is in the body of the human being. And the one that you think is on the other side of the veil whatever that means to you. Is there proof that this could be real? There is. But the proof is elusive. For it only occurs within each of you. And whatever proportion you need to know it is so, let the love of God flow into you today so that when you raise from the place you sit you will say this is real you can't fake what I felt today you'll say spirit is very aware of everything that's going on everything we are not apart from you even for a moment biggest test of life is for you to understand that the biggest aha and realization that any of you could have is when you push open that door and find that we've been there all along you find brothers and sisters and friends a relationship that you somehow knew was there that you feel so comfortable with but that you'll go out of your way to deny all your life until it really comes to a point where you can't anymore. I suppose that is the cry on message and always has been. That there will be some who awaken and some who do not to the potentials on the planet and those who do not will be not judged. And those who do not will not be put in another category and those who do not will not have anything bad happen to them that is a part from those who do for that would be unfair it would be judgmental but I'll tell you those who do and they push on the door and they have the communication and they have the intuitiveness that we speak of often know through that intuition where to be at the right time so welcome to this Time for some of you which is pleasure for others of you which is learning we are very aware of what goes on here today we know why you're here we know of the ship that you are upon we know the destination of where you're going and we know each of you We know of your lives. We know of the difficulties, the challenges. We know the secrets. And there is no judgment of any. There are those who say, if this is truly what's happening, I'm just a little uncomfortable. You're always around me. What if I want some privacy? <laughs> Impossible. Because privacy is not anything that is known in the universe by creatures like you. You are angelic, divine. You're always a group. There are always those around you. You are never alone. And you've heard that before, haven't you? Just a little teaching today, a little, some, little reminders that we should get to. After we tell you that this is a sweet place, we're aware of the music. We're aware of the captain, even if he is not aware of us. Listen to me. Dear human being, you're not what you see. Do you 
you understand why you're here. Maybe it's so that you could take a few days off and really listen to the voice inside you. Oh, not the one coming from my partner and not even the one coming from the other side of the veil that you call cry on. But a cosmic connection where all of the truth on earth resides in every cell of your body should you ask for it. Masters each you are. That's what we teach. And some of you know that I'm right. There are those who sit in this place who have healed themselves, who otherwise might have passed on. Did you know that? Did you know that there are three of you here? have been here if you had not had the free choice to change your contracts did you know that and you know who you are I would like to remind you about numerology simple in its simplest form there is no accident when you connect numbers to almost any other system you might have in any language you might have there are no accidents you know what the numbers mean. And because your culture is the way it is, it's different from place to place. But let us talk about the one you're in, the one you know, and the language that you speak. Simple. There are many human beings who've actually changed their own name because they did not like the numerology of the one that was given to them. And that numerology is often done in the simplest form that anyone could understand. You assign a number in the alphabet to the letter. A would be 1, Z, 26. And using that simple system, which is not anywhere near as accurate or complex as some of the more profound ones, even it will give you the energy of basic names. And so when you start it, you find out that cryon is 11. Uh, but we told you that a long time ago. 1989, that's when I gave my partner all this information. 1993, when it was published and those who would read it. So that's interesting, he's an 11. You know, let me remind you of something. In 1987, you had the harmonic convergence which was then celebrated in 1992 and somehow became the 1111. Each time you see the 1111 or speak the 1111, it speaks of the shift. 11 is the shift. How many of you see 1111 on the clock? And if you do, it's not scary information. shift. You think it's an accident perhaps? Here you are in the 11 energy. Let me give you a lineage of storms. <clears throat> One of the most commonly used metaphors we have had is that you are a lighthouse in the storm. Now perhaps even this message will give you more information about what we're speaking of. A lineage of storms, we told you, and you can find it in the writings which were published, that at the end of the 90s, perhaps in 1999, there would be a man on earth create chaos, a leader. Some say, that it was in Kosovo, some say his name was Saddam. Some say that it prompted what you would call the Gulf War and it had the energy of 11. And those who were astute 
saw that energy as a precursor for what was to come and indeed what came was on the 11th of September the two numbers that have been associated with the shift and the cry on energy from 1989 the 9 and the 11 it's become a noun 9-11 brought to you in Manhattan in order to stir the earth and it did and it will right on schedule and as we've said before there was no prophecy because this was the new track it had to happen and there is the numerology for you to look at magnetics interesting you might say, even broached today. Hmm. More than you know, more than you think, and how it's related even to your lives. The magnetic grid of your planet speaks to your cellular structure, including spiritual information. It is a communication link. We told you this early. Has to be there. It is created through a dynamic engine where the core of the earth moves at a different speed than the crust. That's the engine that creates the magnetics. Basically because of temperature. <clears throat> Think of that. That is the engine that creates the magnetic grid. When the magnetic grid shifted you had to know something was going on in the middle of the earth it doesn't just shift it wasn't an angel pulling on it the cryon grid group came in 89 left in 2002 and that's when the major amount of work was done and you thought we were all up there pushing and pulling on the grid didn't you and you're wrong we were at the core of the earth that's what we were And it got moved because of the geology that is responsible for it. And that is how it got moved. So you might say it was a Gaia project with Gaia's permission. It actually changed the Akash energy, which is defined often as that energy, which is the potential connection to you and your higher self. Ascension energy the Akash of the planet all of that appropriate and then you had the tsunami and you might say how is this appropriate for the earth I will tell you it had to happen the earth had to shift in that fashion in that way in order to cooperate with the speed differences that we were creating between the core and the outer crust and that is what changed and that is why the grid is like it is today and that is why the tsunami happened at all. Well, crying it isn't fair. All of the human life that was seemingly wasted. As many times as we tell you this, you won't understand how death like that could be appropriate. I'll tell you, dear ones, that all of those precious souls knew of the potential and they all came in willingly and what does that tell you about the courage of the angels like you who come in I'll tell you there's a difference between you and them but they had it easy they just came and they went some of them precious souls tiny ones they just came and they went ask them now they're very happy <laughs> you're still here I'll tell you who made the hard decisions it were the ones who who laid into the wind of birth and said we're going into the armageddon energy and we're going to change it we're going to be lighthouses and we're going to live in a land where we don't have to suffer and we're going to live in a land where we have an abundance because then we're not in survival mode and we'll be able to turn our attentions to be a light for this planet and we're going to send light here and there and there and make a big difference and i'm sitting in front of them and these are the courageous ones what really scares you? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> the tsunami generated more compassion 
for this planet than anything had since you've been alive. And all of the compassion went into the earth and that's the reason that it was benevolent. In a way you don't understand the death of children, can't understand it, you won't understand it because you have a pure heart, one in duality, one that loves life. We understand. You don't see it as we do. Life never ends. <laughs> Real life begins when this one ends. You're so restricted here. You want to know what real life is? It's when you're on the other side of the veil in a relationship with God that lets you see who you truly are. And now, Katrina. And we say to you, dear human beings, when are you going to get it? We started telling you about the earth shifts. You got to see them coming. You saw the warming of the oceans you should have known. Seven years ago, you made plans even to strengthen the levees. And you said, well, not yet. Plenty of time. Did it have to happen like this? No, it didn't. But so often is the case that these things have to happen the way they do so that you will finally get it. And put the solutions in place. You have the time, you have the technology. The earth is warming before it cools off. And I will tell you that these storms will be normal for years to come. The perfect storm is going to visit you over and over time to make changes oh and by the way how many of you did the numerology on Katrina hmm. guess what it's an 11 all part of the shift all part of the appropriateness how can death and destruction be appropriate, dear Cryon? It's about free choice, dear human beings, to believe or not believe, to prepare or not prepare. How many, watch, will go and challenge nature to do it again? Pump out the city, make it wonderful so it can happen again. <laughs> what are you going to do with the levees? Oh, you're so linear. And all the planning that goes in to correcting the mess and soothing the hearts of the lost those who lost their loved ones they'll just go home and let it happen again and you say well no we're gonna we're gonna strengthen the levees better do it quick <laughs> there isn't much time because this is going to be with you for a long time. I've even instructed my partner, don't plan any cruises in September in the Caribbean. And you won't see any, because this is going to be with you for a long time. That's what happens when the oceans warm up. You're so linear. What would be easier, do you think, to create levees to hold back tens of thousands of tons of pressure of a lake and a moving river or building a simple wall around a city to keep the flood out if a levee broke <laughs> that's not going to happen it's too simple we're aware of all that took place with the storm love of God is represented here and it's compassionate but I will tell you that these things will touch many before you understand that you're going to have to build around nature instead of in spite of it then there are those who say well let's talk about a real storm what is the greatest storm you can think of be a spiritual storm they would say some people 
the biggest storm was in creation. We've heard about the, the angels and the devils and the fight from heaven and hell and how earth was created. That must have been quite a battle. Let me tell you, there was no battle. There was no storm. You are here under the auspices of the love of God. And when you return home, that's what's there. Some have said, well, no, it's the struggle of life on the planet. There's the good and the evil and, the, and all of these things. And the angels and the devils here, they're after your soul and they're pushing and they're pulling. And you got the duality and it's hard to, to walk from one place to another and know what to do. Well, that's no snowstorm there either. Human being, the most glorious master on the planet was a human. <laughs> the best, the best, most divine things on the planet have come right out of human cellular structure and the most evil, decadent things you can imagine, the blackest of the black, the most awful, also belong to the human being. It's you with you. That's a storm. Uh, not really. That's just human nature. You live with that all the time. No, there's something bigger. I'll tell you where the real storm is. It's in Jerusalem. <laughs> it's at the fulcrum of 9-11. Of the shift of earth. That's where the storm is. The battle from the old to the new. Do you realize just how old and entrenched those areas are with consciousness? Did you understand, dear human being, that if you live there, if you were born there, if you call yourself a Jew and have gone there, there is no hope that you will solve your own problem. It's too big. It was designed that way. It's going to require outside help. And guess where the help's going to come from? Light workers who understand the shift. And are not afraid of it. And see a bigger picture. Oh yes, they will give of their resources and their, and their time and their energy. And they'll help these who are stuck in the storm who don't know. When it's all over, you will then move back, regroup, and shine your light on Israel. I will tell you yet again, there is the storm. You want to advance a more calm weather on the planet? I will give you a way to. How would you like to skip over the next few years of learning and earth moving and earth shaking? You shine your light on Israel. Let them make wise decisions based on a light you shine in their dark place and start healing that land and the rest will calm down, including the weather. Too simple, Cryon. Too bizarre, too spooky. It's connected and you don't believe it, do you? I just told you that human consciousness was responsible for a slowdown in the Earth's core. An earthquake that made a, a tsunami and a warming ocean that created Katrina. It's connected. The shift is upon you, dear human being, and here you sit in the middle of it. What is your greatest fear? What is your greatest fear? Are you afraid of storm? Perhaps you have been watching your media and you'd say, oh, if that were only me, I'm so glad. What would I do if everything I owned was simply blown away? I had nothing left. Where would I go? What would I be? Maybe you're afraid of that. You live in areas where that can happen to you. Where weather may come and take what you have. Some of you have said, "Well, I'm no, I'm, a, I'm more afraid of the earth moving. I live in a place where it could move greatly, and the same kind of devastation and the same kind of thing would happen to us that we've seen in a hurricane." 
That's what I'm afraid of, you say. What's your fear? Isn't it interesting, right this minute, you pass over Earth at the bottom of the ocean, right this minute, which is volatile and ready for shift. Did you know that? It's happened before up here. There are certain parts of the earth that are ready to move, and they will. My partner said to me not long ago, as he sat in his home enjoying it, Dear Cryon, I don't want to lose my home. I don't want my city in ruins. I don't want the big earthquake to happen in, in California. Is it appropriate to pray that it does not happen? And I said to my partner, no, it is not appropriate. And he said, what is appropriate? And I said, to hold your space as a lighthouse so that when the earth moves, because there are enough of you here, including you, it won't move near to the degree it would have otherwise. And so he said, so it will move. And I said, of course, it's going to move. <laughs> Any doubt. And then I said to my partner, if you lost everything, would you do it for a higher good? He hasn't answered me yet. <laughs> it's tough, isn't it? What are you afraid of? Let me give you something to think about. Blessed is the human being that knows that there is no loss when they accept the love of God in their life. You can have peace over the most amazing things that take place and walk from place to place realizing that what you have is your divinity and everything else doesn't matter. Just stuff. What are you afraid of? There is no energy on the planet that can take your divinity. What are you afraid of? Things? Death, perhaps. Oh, you've done that many times. That's just moving from one energy to another energy. Oh, I understand the humanness of it. All right, understand this. You're here for a reason. We don't need you to leave and grow up and take 20 years to get here again. We need you to stay here now, dear human beings, and shine your light so completely that if and when such a thing should ever happen where you are, that your light will be so strong that it will be less severe where you stand. And in the future years, maybe some of you will be put in a place where you'll say, this is what Crying was talking about. You're connected to everyone in this room. Did you know that? And they'll know you. They'll remember this cruise. They'll remember these words this day. And they'll think about you. And you'll be instantly connected to everyone here. That's the way it works. You are in the middle of the shift. If you want to send any kind of light anywhere, you will send it to those in charge who are supposed to have the wisdom of planning. For them to understand there is no way they can thwart this nature. It is changing. It is shifting. This is not a renegade storm. This is the new paradigm. And we told you it was coming, and here it is. There will be another one. And even another one. Maybe it's time to cooperate with the Earth's energy and say, how can we build differently? How can we do things that make more sense than trying to hold back nature? Why don't we somehow do something that actually cooperates with it but keeps us in safety? Those are the plans you should be looking at. And they're there. And they're smart. And they're wise. And no one has thought of them yet because they're new paradigm thinking for protection.
When you start doing these kinds of things, then you won't have the catastrophe that you had. There are certain kinds of building that you can do that will sustain themselves during these kinds of winds. No one has ever yet thought of building an aerodynamic home, have they? Every home that you see made of matchsticks and built to have the roof pop off. <laughs> How interesting. You get a few of those being built on the coast and when you see that they don't blow away, it'll be a new kind of funny looking house. Watch for this. Should you choose to accept the wisdom of it, think of it, an aerodynamic home. The more the wind blows, the harder it blows, the more it's pushed down into the earth instead of lifted up. All the technology is there. So many things for you to do that are there that will cooperate with a new paradigm instead of forcing it into one way or another. I'm almost finished. This doesn't have to be a long message. Brian, what is the greatest paradigm you would like us to accept and understand and realize that will get us from A to B faster <laughs> and change the weather? And I'll say to you, funny, you should ask. <laughs> Angels, what are you afraid of? You afraid of somebody's gonna, gonna rip the love of God out of your heart? It can't happen, it cannot happen. You are completely 100% protected in that aspect. You're never alone. Accept the new paradigm that you are more than you seem. You have days to look at nature, to sit alone perhaps and ponder the ocean as it wanders by. And I want to tell you, maybe this is the time in your own consciousness where you might ask the question, is it true or not true? Could it be that I am bigger than I seem? Could it be that I'm eternal? could it be and if I am what does that mean I'm here for and I'll tell you the big question can you open the door and let us in or not ah some of you are so new at this welcome to an energy that was always destined to be upon you should you ask for it It's an energy that suits you so well. Oh, light worker. Different consciousness, each one. Different ideas of how things work, each one. But each one connected to the other so strongly that when I tell you that the love of God is in this place, you'll know I am telling the truth. We even have the potential of a healing before this cruise is over. Someone who will leave differently than you came. What about that one? Lightworker. The crying message is always the same. It always will be. Maybe there'll come a day when you claim the mastery inside. And you've taken over the planet and created the new Jerusalem. And I can just walk away. And wait for you to come home. And if that ever happened that way, I would be rejoicing every day that you had come and created exactly the potential that we see. The potential we see is peace on earth. You may live long enough to see it or not. It doesn't matter. While you're here, you're shining a light that no other creature can do. You see, it's the one who is awakened knows the story it's the one who's awake and who knows how to send the light and that's why we love you the way we do that's why you're here I was with you when you leaned into the wind of birth we talked about the potential and here it is and here it is and here it is and so it is